disrupting the industry. How AI, new data and big data are rattling the changes of business processes. Hi, welcome to this uh, AIBC Europe session on disrupting the industry, how AI, new data and big data are going to battle to change the business processes of the future. My name is Angelo Dali, I'll be the host for this uh, panel and I'm the CEO of Umni, an explainable AI company that is doing collaborative intelligence solutions. And with me I have today Sofia Aryan, Issame Uteleb and David Orban. Um, uh, I'll start with uh, Sofia, uh, so just you know, introduce yourself a little bit and tell us what uh, your company does. Hi guys, it's very nice to meet you all. Um, so I'm a co-founder of Bagao.dev. We're building a search engine for software teams. Basically, we provide all contextual information for developers about their code base. And my path to AI was a little bit um, not traditional. I was a professional ballet dancer uh, many years ago. And um, as a, you know, as an athlete, I had uh, injury and I had to, you know, reevaluate my path. And I transitioned to AI. I started doing more technical work. I was accepted to OpenAI, it's AI research lab in San Francisco. And from there, I was involved in AI and doing my best to contribute to the field. Nice, and Issam? Yeah, I'm Issam Utalib, originally from Munich and Morocco. I am CEO and founder of PharmaTrace, which is a track and trace, uh, or our solution focuses on track and trace in, in medical supply chains, deploying AI and machine and blockchain. On the other hand, we are as well focusing on the prediction of chronic diseases, uh, utilizing, of course, deep learning uh, as a main uh, tool. Other than that, I'm, <clears throat> I'm engaged in different uh, big pharma projects in chronic diseases. I'm happy to be here. Interesting. And uh, D David Orban? Uh, I started in artificial intelligence uh, 30 years ago uh, when uh, Certainly, the uh, very different. Uh, to see today the power of AI is uh, really wonderful. Currently, I'm uh, Vice President Corporate Development at Sore, uh, that is an AI powered platform uh, re implementing professional networks uh, for finding jobs and finding talent. Excellent. Yes, uh, so I'll start off with, Sof uh, with you, Sophia. And uh, wh what do you see as like, the biggest challenge at the moment of uh, how AI and the business processes face at the moment? And how are you solving that? I mean, you know, with every technology that is, uh, has like a huge impact, there are also, it comes with challenges, right? Nothing comes very easy. And there are so many resources accumulated around like machine learning, because this technology is truly powerful and has uh, potentially huge, um, huge impact on society. Like the challenges that I see for now uh, in the industry and in the work I do, it's first of all privacy, uh, basically how to on, uh, secure sensitive data, especially like for healthcare, right? Like for finance, uh, like large institutions, uh, especially like healthcare institutions, they face the problem of uh, how to give access like securely to even their own employees, even their own data scientists who work inside the company so they can use that data and build models. But the, another challenge is also with those institutions, they, they want to leverage that data, but how to securely share with other or, or organizations and um, and uh, exchange those data processes securely. I, I think the, the privacy aspect is uh, one of the, the biggest challenges in, in machine learning. It's an uh, ongoing research. And um, at this moment, there, there is, you know, there is no like one size fit all, right? The, we, we solve some problem, then we encounter another problem. So it is a never ending chain of problems that you have to solve regarding privacy. Do you think that in the EU, that the EU approach to, to privacy though will uh, impact the way that AI in Europe is uh, done versus AI in the States or in China? Yes, yes, of course. I mean, uh, in, 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 in Europe, there is a GDPR, right? It's like more strict. Uh, in China, this completely opposite uh, kind of um, completely opposite approach to this where people 
don't have any privacy. And actually, this is a scary thing, right? So like a f facial recognition technology, uh, the, the, the scoring of, you know, behavior of, of persons. So, for example, if they have some um, traffic tickets uh, and some like minor violations that impacts on their credit score and basically makes them, um, you know, outsiders of, of society, which is like complete extreme. Um, it, U.S. has its own problems. Uh, you know, those large companies like tech giants, they accumulate lots of data that, that we produce as consumers and we don't have power over that data. And this is like extremely frustrating. Um, and I hope actually with, with blockchain technology that might also like change to, to some extent because we, uh, we are owners of our data, right? And we have right to decide how we can use it. But now we, we don't have control and this situation should be addressed. Um, at the same time, for example, I live in California and we have more, in our state, we have more strict um, privacy preserving laws that uh, makes, for example, make me as a, uh, as a consumer, as a user, more secure. Like, you know, like when I use some websites, I can choose what, uh, what personal information the website can collect uh, about me. But it's only California. Uh, the United States is a large, large country, right? So uh, I would say United States is somewhere in, in the middle, uh, where at some point, like the tech giants, they collect in your data, but this privacy, but you have rights, you have some um, tools to, to, to protect yourself as a user uh, and, and address those privacy related issues. Very interesting. And Issam, I mean, I'm sure that you encounter these problems also in the deployment of models and also in uh, how you actually get models into production. I've uh, read a study, in fact, a survey that said that over 90% of models that have been developed um, uh, during, you know, testing by data science do not actually get deployed into production. I mean, how do you see this as a challenge and also what changes do, do you experience in, in disrupting this? Yeah, so um, absolutely. So I can uh, only second that. So the our our own experience. But let me first step maybe one step back. So we we do have I would say three types of AIs, which is the first one is like pure uh, reactive machines. They do they do have neither past nor they can access uh, uh, their memories. But in the second type of uh, of AI, we do have uh, the limited memory. I would say. So that's like they still like in the self-driving. They still cooperate with the uh, with the past and going forward to, uh, forward to take decisions. But where are we right now? We are like in a, in a theory of mind. So that means like we have built machines and what kind of machines we would like to build. And there is where we have the issue basically of theory of minds where uh, I'm seeing like um, like uh, I would call it like the how can we debug. The AI itself. So we are focusing too much on the solutions, but there is the flip side of the coin, which is like the back into the eyes if we get hacked. And the issue here is the issue. And let me explain it maybe to the audience and you guys uh, what I'm thinking. So there is um, uh, you in in a normal or I would like the conservative programming. You do have two dimensions. So you have the algorithm itself and the code itself. You do basically have two main um, sources of issues either the code is wrong someone wrote it wrong or the algorithm is like it's uh, it's not given what we are expecting so that's something that's you need to back but when it comes to the eye itself it at two other dimensions to the, the matrix which is the data and the model itself so basically we went from two dimensions to four dimensions and once you once you try to fix one dimension it's going to affect the other trees three dimensions this is where it comes the complexity of, of AI and how are we gonna how are, how are we gonna like um, control it? Control it means do I see the right results I want to see or is it like something that we we just give control to the to the machine but we cannot cannot basically like like test it before and we don't we are still in a research phase now to to find kind of solutions that you don't need to retrain the whole algorithm. Those are like the kind of uh, of issues we are really facing and I would really like to shift a little bit in our startup as well toward this direction. 
on last note, it's basically if you see the the Thai bot from, for instance, from Microsoft, they shut it down. Uh, was like linked to the Twitter, and they shut it down like in 16 days because it was like spammed. And all of a sudden, that was the most racist bot <laughs> that you can ever have. So that's that's gonna highlight some, uh, you know, the other f side of 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 the coin. Nevertheless, um, uh, we I see that we have to go always in a s sequence wise. So it means like what what do we define for us as a humans? Is it like we are still perceive it as the truth? Once you perceive it, then we can move move forward. Not that really fast and for different dimensions. Yes, of course, and uh, this is something that I think that AI, uh, the current models with deep learning, um, obviously do have a certain number of limitations, that it is a black box, you do not understand exactly what is going on, also in terms of privacy, also in terms of performance, and in various different aspects. So, so David, I mean, give us your insight also into what do you think are the challenges in, uh, in what Torre is doing and, you know, in, in, in AI and the disruption of business processes. Uh, during the 20th uh, century, we have become accustomed uh, to technology changing society. Actually, there is the, the say, the only constant is change. Uh, however, uh, I think in the 21st century, we have to realize that change is not even constant, but it is itself uh, increasing. Uh, the acceleration of technological change uh, is increasing. Uh, and we can see that uh, with data. Uh, if uh, the past uh, 50 years were characterized by Moore's law, uh, where we have uh, every couple of years the power of our computers uh, doubling, uh, just about a month ago, uh, the CEO of uh, NVIDIA uh, gave data uh, where they are seeing the power of AI doubling not every two years, but every two months. And uh, Intel just a week ago announced uh, at a conference on the future of electronic manufacturing a coordinated effort uh, with their entire ecosystem uh, to support an increase in the power of AI a thousandfold in just uh, four years. So I call uh, this uh, the, the paradigm of jolting technology, where the rate of acceleration is increasing, and that is the source of uh, the almost impossible conundrum for regulators uh, that uh, are trying to run faster than technology is, but it is as if they were running behind a rocket station. Uh, for businesses uh, for whom uh, the uh, not only processes, but the entire business models are being disrupted even before they can uh, be adopted and implemented. And for individuals, uh, who are throwing in the towel uh, and uh, they see their rea reality fragmenting and they don't uh, understand how a rational science-based approach uh, can be used in order to understand what is going on in the world and they are resorting to superstitious uh, or um, uh, 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 theories uh, uh, of... Uh, uh, of alternative explanation of, of, of reality uh, that is not based on facts uh, anymore. Uh, now, uh, at Torre, obviously, we don't have either a silver bullet to resolve this huge uh, challenge, uh, but uh, I think it is the responsibility of each uh, individual AI practitioner, and especially of corporations that have the resources uh, to um, implement uh, superstructures of analysis and understanding uh, to be um, uh, uh, conscious of the potential consequences and downsides uh, of, of these technologies and set up uh, processes and guidelines uh, that are aimed to, to prevent these uh, downsides. Uh, at Tore, uh, we published uh, the FAIR uh, manifesto uh, that aims uh, to um, uh, be adopted by other uh, companies as well that are applying uh, artificial intelligence in the processes of uh, hiring and staffing so that, for example, uh, they can be accountable, they can be transparent. You know uh, why your ranking as a candidate was 
uh, pie or, or less pie, that uh, bias and discrimination can be identified and then systematically reduced and ideally, of course, eliminated as possible uh, through a progressive process of improvement of these algorithms. And if a, a company subscribes to these principles, they become a very important uh, guiding um, foundation for healthy implementation uh, of uh, ever more powerful AI algorithms, both uh, in uh, each of these businesses as well as uh, in society at large. That's very interesting. And how do you see that the privacy implications, for example, in submitting uh, your, your resume and or CV to, 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 to in, in HR applications, how will your privacy be protected? Uh, how would that, can I actually remove my data or protect my privacy? So, so uh, obviously, the uh, regulatory uh, evolution of uh, what we understand about uh, the need of protecting individual privacy is proving and each of the uh, technology platforms must abide by those uh, requirements, such as, for example, the rights of every European citizen of having their data deleted from, uh, from the platform. Uh, my opinion is that uh, society uh, has an even higher interest in protecting privacy than not the value deriving from it to each individual because it is only through the protection of minority behavior that these can graduate to becoming the norm. And if uh, a previously uh, fringe behavior mm -hmm. cannot achieve this uh, migration into, into majority because it is uh, stemmed out uh, by necessary conformance, uh, then society cannot evolve and it will disintegrate. So That's very those, true. Uh, nations that do not implement uh, strong privacy protection uh, are running a serious risk of uh, decoupling from the behavior, from the desired behavior of uh, the individuals uh, that uh, are part of it. Excellent. Since we have uh, like a little bit of time left, uh, I want to get like a quick take from each of you, uh, just a few s seconds, like on how you intend to disrupt um, uh, the AI in the future. Uh, I'll start with Sophia. So uh, what we are doing uh, in, uh, in our company is we're uh, helping software engineers, uh, developers, and basically we pull out the content from uh, different sources that they use, you know, like GitHub uh, pull requests or like uh, issue trackers, like communication tools, and we provide context of their uh, code base and uh, semi-automatically populate um, uh, the documentation that they need. So they don't need to do manual work, for example, to uh, write documentation about their code, but it's all pre-populated. This is what we do. Um, another thing that, in general, I would love to uh, emphasize in general in terms of uh, machine learning and what David said about like biases in um, uh, hiring application. I think it's very important that we, like uh, like humans, uh, uh, we need to be more mindful. Uh, you know, in terms of like we can prevent those biases. Let's say, for, for example, in my career, we were training. Uh, AI models, uh, you know, like you take picture of a person and model can predict uh, the, the gender, the age, and it was working very well on white people. But when it comes to like Asians, South Asian people, the model didn't work. And and we need like more, collect more data, right, to, to address uh, those issues. Of course. Uh, or better technology, or better technology. Sorry, I'm, uh, because we're running out of time. So, and uh, Sam, how, how do you see that uh, the disruption can be achieved from your end? We have just yeah, a few so, seconds. Yeah, uh, so the disruption is going to come from two axes, basically. The first one is the technology itself, and the second one is the mindset. So the first one, so the technology means like uh, we are deploying uh, blockchain to structure the data. To, to, that's very important. Source of data is very important in the prediction models. And then we have AI algorithms with that suits the need. The mindset means like you can have the best program that you can imagine, but if the mindset, mindset in, the, in the society is not there, you won't achieve the desired access. 
That's excellent, excellent, pretty it. excellent. And David, I think you already gave your views on the on disruption, and you know, if I, I have to conclude this, and um, I, I think that it is it's very interesting the, the topics that you've raised, the privacy, the way that you know changes the only constant uh, thing that we have in the world, and I think that is a very good uh, paradigm for the AI industry. I've uh, been in it for more than twenty years. Now I've seen it um, change from bit by bit. The algorithms have stayed the same, but there is more data, better hardware, and I do think that there will be a paradigm change that will disrupt the way that industry is done, how AI is delivered, and also how we communicate and use it together in a fair and trustworthy way. Thank you very much for following and uh, thank you for coming and listening to the AIBC Europe.